Shadow. Come on, I was just oh, winning. Just backing up on Why? Stupid game. Pseudo Interactive released this piece of shit, November 14, 2001 on the Xbox and January 7, 2002 on the GameCube. This game takes battle mode and Call of Duty and Borderlands driving, shuffles it around and pops out some weird deformed child. The developer Pseudo Interactive founded in 1995 and they closed in 2008. The reason that they closed was mainly due to their poor sales. They only had three games out, Cell Damage, Full Auto 1 on the Xbox, and Full Auto 2 on the PlayStation. <gasps> Alright, so you were exclusive to Xbox and then you were exclusive to the PlayStation. Make up your mind! Now Cell Damage is a part of a group of games and a genre or subgenre, I guess called vehicular combat. Now you might be wondering just like me, how does a game like Cell Damage happen? Where did the road of this genre start and where did we go to get this? Well, if you really want the beginning, then we're going to have to go all the way back to 1975. Yep, I can't believe it. We are all the way back in time before I was born, before my mom was born, before Wario, Ape Ago. Destruction Derby was a game that was released in the arcade. It's a little game where you drive a car around and you hit other people. It was reworked in Death Race in 1976, which is the footage that you are seeing today. Would you believe that this was enough to cause a controversy? People were actually pissed off about this and said it was too violent. Oh my god, if they could only see what happened today. In 1983, Spy Hunter would hit the arcades, and eventually it would hit an NES in 1987. Now, this is more like it. We are shooting other cars! Yeah! I'm shooting the fuck out! Die! I'm back! Vehicular manslaughter is my favorite thing, and this game is just basically you being a spy, kill other spies, don't kill civilians. Road Blasters would be another game that was released for the system in 1987, and yeah, this one is a little bit interesting. I mean, you can tell what's going on. That was fun, but oh my god, a game developed by Rare, baby, Cobra Triangle. This was actually one of the most fun games that I played for the NES that had to do with vehicular combat. You're driving this boat, you do a multitude of different things. Shoot things, deliver a bomb. Bravo, seal bastard, I got the f***ing bomb and- hey, Give me that shit back! My god, this game is addicting. Maybe people today point to Mad Max for being a part of this genre, but f*** that. 1990 Mad Max on the NES. I don't know what to do here. Uh, you drive around for a little bit so you run out of gas and you lose. I literally don't know what to do. Oh, Sega comes a-knockin'. And in 1991, they released the first of several different iterations of Road Rash. It is a vehicular combat game where you are doing a cyclist Grand Prix. This is the most fun I've ever had on a f***ing... What is this, 16-bit? You can kick, punch, eventually get a whip, and all other kinds of things. Apparently this is based on how people actually perform in Cyclist Grand Prix, like they'll actually try to kick each other. F***ing assholes! Alright, put your f***ing big boy pants on, it's Super Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo. Okay, 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 I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. Scone, what the f***, this is a kart racer. No, it's not. Listen, there is a battle mode if you plug in two controllers, and this... This is destruction, baby. No, but in all seriousness, this definitely did inspire some aspects of vehicular combat, but another game that was released in the arcades, yep, we're going back to there, Lucky and Wild, 1993, baby. Let me say that a lot of these arcade games had driving wheels, they had accelerating pedals, buttons everywhere. Emulating this is a fucking chore. But visually, this thing is sexy as f I'd give it a cookie if I could. Oh yeah, you know those guys who made Doom? Yeah, ID Software also developed a game called Hover Tank 3D. You're shooting shit. Go! I am here to save you! <sighs> no, 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 little alien, you die! <sighs> Rock and Roll Racing is a very interesting game. I've heard a lot of people at least bring it up once or twice, or see footage of it popping around, but this game is actually quite fun, but... I find that I usually outrace everybody, or I'm f***ing in last. Alright, below the age of 17, get the f*** out. We're getting to the mature ratings here. Carmageddon and Twisted Metal. Released around the same time, both of these games would define vehicular combat in the modern age. Twisted Metal is a f***ing amazing game. I love killing other people. Fuck Call of Duty. But both of these would spawn basically a franchise. Twisted Metal would get countless amounts of releases, and they're even getting a remake currently. Basically, this set the course for all vehicular combat games moving forward. Gone are the days of pixelated driving. Now, it's... <laughs> if a bus is tailgating you, you're either a fucking grandma, or you're playing Vigilante 8. This is one that I actually played quite a bit. Um, yeah. 
same as everything else. It's kind of really hard to get excited about this because a lot of these games, look, I played Twisted Metal 1 through 4, I played Carmageddon 1 through 3, I played Vigilante 1 and 2, it just, they all blended together. Nothing sticks out! Which is why Pseudo Interactive Cell Damage in 2001 just f***ing changed the game. And nobody bought it! I mean, according to VG Charts, only 13 people own it, so f***. I guess no one's gonna be able to get this game. Before closing, Pseudo Interactive actually had a few titles in development. Fruit Awakening had a TF2 art style and was driving combat. Prodigal, you're a demon and you're the heir of a demon bloodline who has to kill a bunch of people and drive around an open world. Yeah, these images kind of look like it. Divided City and Cell Damage 2. Cell Damage 2 has like a few seconds worth of content, but for the most part, all of these games are gone and forgotten. A lot of the developers of Pseudo Interactive would create two companies, Finish Line Games and Drinkbox Studios. Now, both of these companies would be responsible for their own shit that they released, but Finish Line Games would recreate Cell Damage in Cell Damage HD, released on Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. I didn't fucking know about this. All right, enough talk. We have to get to the bottom of this. Who fucking hates cell damage? Who's repulsed by this? Finally learn of the disease that's slowly killing her. Will Cinder finally become house trained? Freeze ray! Oh, freeze ray! Freeze ray! <laughs> Get the Gobert, get the f freeze ray! <laughs> freeze ray, freeze ray, freeze ray, freeze ray! Ah. Freeze ray, freeze ray! Wow, where do I even start? Cell Damage is a monumental title, giving you six characters at the start with a variety of weapons. You have one signature weapon per character, and the rest are on the ground. Some are one hit kills, some take aim and precision. From the first match, this game already makes sense. It's Call of Duty in car form. Drive around, blow each other the fuck up, and keep doing it over and over again. I guarantee that you can pick up this game for the first time and play it for an entire night as if nothing fucking happened and no time went by. This game is insanely addictive and fun. One of the most important things about combat games is the maps, and this game does not disappoint. While there are only 12 maps, there are 4 themes with 3 distinct arenas. Desert, Jungle, Transylvania, and Space, each having one unlockable character. Right. In which, I think that it's about time that we actually get to look at these characters. First, we have BT Bruno, Cinder, Dominic Trix, Foul Mouth, Violet, last but not least, Lemming. In terms of their play styles, their play style really only depends on their special ability. Some of their special abilities are good, like Cinder's fucking lawnmower, I guess. And then some of them are kind of shitty, like Fleming's laser. Now, before we get into the rest of the weapons, I do want to say that these characters, oh my god, I love all of them. They all have their own distinct personalities and their callouts whenever they get killed or kill somebody. I oh, my mother gave you heart disease! I love it. These characters are constantly monologuing and talking to each other, and you will never experience a dull moment. This game definitely puts the cell in cell damage. It looks beautiful. I mean, come on, this game doesn't really look that outdated compared to the other ones. This one has a unique cell style, and I like that. The characters have nice outlines, and they are colored as such, and I think it looks beautiful. By the way, there are stage hazards in these stages. They aren't just blank. They actually have things that can kill you, transport you, do a number of things. All right, so on the generic weapons, we have a baseball bat, chainsaw, chain gun, or mini gun, axe, boxing gloves, freeze ray, and grenades. On top of all of the unique weapons, Fleming has his laser, Foulmouth has his Tommy gun, Dominique Trix has her dynamite crossbow, BT Bruno has his fucking Smash Brothers melee fucking stupid fucking hammer, Cinder has his wood chipper, and last but not least, Violet has her mortar. I find it funny that these little guys run away from their cars unscathed no matter what happens to it. While this game can be beaten in an afternoon and the characters could be unlocked rather smoothly, I think that this game longevity wise, it has replayability that almost no other game really has considering that it's just blind fun in these big ass arenas. Go Berserk. Up to four players split screen by the way, can you believe that? Yeah, get him, get him! <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, boom, I win. Yeah, boom, I win. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks like they put some motherfucking Mario Kart mode in this. Yeah. Come on, go faster. No. What does this cool item do? Ow. Oh my, my guy. What are you doing? Look at the bow. 
Oh my god, final lap. We're right there. We're right there. No, 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 no. Why? Why do I have to get stuck now? Why do I have to get stuck? Come on, come on, come on. We can make we can still make this. We can, come on. We can fix this. We can, we can do this. No! Better up, better up. Better, 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 better. better. Did you just see that? I just knocked the saw blade out with the bat. That's sick. Um, what am I? Where am I going? Where do I go? <gasps> oh, I could be Mike Tyson. Oh, yo, 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 give me that, give me that. Why? Capture the flag. Yo, the flags are running. I got shoes. What's going on? I have three. I just need one more. Come on, come on. Gex. Oh my God, I see foul mouth in my corner. Please don't blow me up. Please don't blow me up. Uh oh. Thanks, practice, kid. Now, what kind of funky guy would I be if I didn't mention the soundtrack of any given game? Holy! If you don't listen to this soundtrack, play this game, and buy it, you're a bitch. Now I have more games to play, and until next time... Man!